there are issues, there are things that we need to make sure that we're mobilizing and organizing around because regardless of who is president, like a lot of the foundation, like people were saying, well, you know, marriage equality is real and Obama did that. Obama didn't do that. Let's right. just be let's be clear. Ooh, there were there were there are activists, there are organizers, there are individuals who are willing to put themselves on the line to to be test cases in these different lawsuits who who were able to organize and really, you know, energize in their various areas to 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 mobilize and then we finally ultimately change public opinion and then, you know, now we have an option. We have now we finally get to the point, you know, 10 years, however many years it was later where we now have well, I'm I'm, I'm criticizing Obama, but I'm not dogging or attacking his character. It is a difference. You know, he was on the right side of history. If you're a leader, that's the best thing for you to do is be on the right side of history. You know, several of these Democrats just a few years ago were, were, were you know, um, it's between a man and a woman, um, blah, blah, blah. And now all of a sudden, everyone's in favor and they're not going to, you know, interfere with people's right to, to, to marry who they choose because that's where the popular opinion has been. There are enough people who put in the work and built up that movement, right? Now we have a similar issue ha starting to happen. We talk about transgender rights in this bathroom issue, which is really a deeper issue there, right? People just want the right to deny people access to public accommodations and businesses and things like that. That's, that's really where we're going with that stuff. So I do agree that regardless of whether you're Bernie or bust, whether you're, you see Hillary as a viable person to vote for, if with Bernie, if Bernie does not make it, regardless of what you see, we have a need for, for, for a strong social movement around whatever the core values are. If we're just if we're gonna force the Democratic Party, like if we're talking about Bernie, if Bernie is not the nominee and we're talking about we have all these things that we care about and we're gonna force the Democratic Party to be accountable to this platform to the best of our ability so that by the time we have our next election cycle, we're in a position to get a candidate in who actually adheres to these, you know, whatever it is, we gotta keep working. Right? Force so them. Even if we, 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 we have to build that movement regardless of what that looks like. Even if we force them away from the left, right? So it's not even about forcing them to change as much as it is forcing them away from us. Like, move on because we are we have in, irreconcilable differences. And I think that's what we found in this election. Like, there are just that we just don't have anything in common anymore except for maybe some social issues and you still have Democrats voting against uh, some social issues. So, you know, I think we can do one or two things in the next election cycle, which is, and, and remind me to mention this last thing about Victor, uh, because I think I know what the, the, the chat room is talking about. Um, we have the ability to draw the line and simply say and demonstrate that we are so different that there's no reason for us to be underneath the same tent. However, we have to do that with strong enough numbers. Here's the problem with, <clears throat> yes, as my my beautiful wife comes in from, uh huh. We'll talk anyway. It, here's the problem with Bernie or bust. In the sense of what Victor was saying and the actual organization and the movement that's going on after and the part three of Bernie or Bus, it sounded like there was in three phases. I understood exactly what he was saying, and I'm very happy to see that they have it in three phases. They had Still Sanders, Bernie or Bus, and then they're going after the TPP. They're they're organized. How many people yelling Bernie or Bust online are actually even cognizant of the three phases of Bernie or Bust? And that's the reason I'm, I'm so harping on it so much because a lot of people are using, despite just hearing what the platform actually is, that there's actually three phases, that it won't go away. There's a lot of you who ain't know about that until I just brought him on the show. There's a lot of people who never heard about this, and Bernie or Bust to you actually represented disengagement. So don't front on me. Don't Keep it 100 all the way around the board. There is a structure there, fine. Cling to it and run with it. But don't act like you guys all had this master plan where if this part doesn't work, then we're going to do this. And that's what we need more than anything else. And I'm sorry if I'm yelling at you guys and I'm yelling at myself. I'm just yelling all the way around the board because it is a necessary thing for us to organize tonight 
for the rest of our lives, and so many of us haven't been able to do so, but now it's time, like JP said, to use this technology, to use the community building, the, the capacity that we have to grow this movement so that in, 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 in four years, it's not even a question of whether or not the Democratic Party has to listen to us. It's you either listen to us or you completely move away from us because our numbers, we got to get our numbers up. We got to get our numbers up and our organization up so that we can make demands that can never be ignored. Let me let me say something about that. In order for that to be viable, we have to break the mindset. Like even yeah. for people that are open to different things, acknowledging a third party or moving away from the Democratic Party is is just a bridge that even some of the most erudite people cannot cross. Tom Hartman is an example. You watch his show. And I don't know if anybody watches it, but it is very, very educational. Like if anybody calls in about a book or an author or they quote something, Tom is on top of it. He's an avid reader. He knows exactly what they're talking about. And he can summarize and even correct the caller half of the time. That is how much of an erudite he is. But he's still, even after all that, he's still binded by we have to work within the two-party system. That's just the way it is. And, and the problem I have with that is that mindset is why we are here where we are today. If we didn't have that mindset, we could definitely do something different because the way people have been voting, voting the lesser of two evils, it has facilitated a situation where it has grown to where it is today. I, agree with that. I think that's a cop-out. I think that's a cop-out and, and it, it abdicates our responsibilities as people on the left and the far. Well, I'm not. I'm not. Ab I'm not abdicating any responsibility. No, hang on, hang on. no, no. Actually, there's quite a few people who have abdicated their responsibilities as leaders from the far left and from the left in general, because there's no such thing as a far left in America anymore. They have abdicated their responsibility to organize, and they've taken up the platform of criticism. And criticism is good, but if all you're going to do is criticism, you're not building anything. And so, some of the most ardent voices have been great at critiquing but never have done anything to organize so as much as it may be problems of people like Tom Hartman who who understand the problem but still comply with the two-party system where are the people that are actually organizing in a significant fashion on a state-by-state -state, local local and on a national level to actually solidify a movement that can actually bring that type of change so yes there are people who 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 cower before the two-party system but at the same time, where is the organizational structure and who's doing it on a consistent level outside of people who are just criticizing? Well, well, historically, that organization has come from the far left parties, intelligentsia in the universities, the Socialist Party, the Communist Party, and the labor unions. And basically what happened was that coalition was destroyed by the right in, in the aftermath of World War II. So those were our organizations right there. They got destroyed by the right, and that's what helped facilitate where we are today. But trying to say that that's a cop out is kind of ignoring like what actually happened to those people. You know, that coalition, just like the multiple coalitions inside the Democratic Party, right now they were separated and defeated. Are we really, Nick, going to use what you said, which is a factual point? Are we really going to use what happened post World War II, uh, particularly what happened in the 60s with the labor unions being gutted, right? Are we going to allow something that happened 50 years ago still cast our uh, our lot for the next generation? Right. We, we, we're in a different age with different technology, with different opportunities. And where is the movement that's operating inside of this technology, inside of this age? We were set back in the, in the 50s, 60s and 70s. And in the 80s, they just ran over our asses. Are we still going to let that cast our net for the next generation? I don't think that that's a good excuse. Well, I'm not. I'm not making it as an excuse. I'm. A, I'm just offering an explanation as to where the organizational effort, why it's not there, and it's because it was destroyed. We have to build it back, but in order to build it back, we need certain structural things to be changed, and those things are are not at our advantage right now. We really do need the labor unions to be empowered, and we really do need to separate. You know, uh, basically the universities, we need to separate them from corporations. We need to actually increase civic awareness among children and, in, and individuals, period. We have to beat back an ideology that's been propagated for almost 50 years. We're mm -hmm. trying to change that overnight. Now, the millennial generation right now is living with the results of all those things, and they're rebelling against it. They really are. We mm -hmm. really are, you know, 
you see with our generation, we're the first generation that doesn't have any loyalty to a workplace. We don't really care about corporate this and corporate that. Yeah. That is that is gone, and that's just one small, you know, kind of like a result of living with all those consequences. You know, now capitalism is not a good word like it used to be. Liberal is not as denigrated as it used to be. Progressive is not as denigrated as it used to be. Socialism is growing in popularity. People have an increased awareness of how things work over the around the world. Even American exceptionalism is being called into question with this next generation. So the wave is coming. Now, what's happening right now, it really is just to stall it, but we have to understand that the tactics that worked in the past will not work quite the same right now, mainly because of what I said, the infrastructure has been destroyed. Exactly, but 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 in, in your explanation, and I, I agree with you like 99% of everything you just said, I agree with you. In your explanation, it was almost a chicken or the egg, like is this movement mm -hmm. going to be built once we get this problem fixed? Because that problem is never going to be fixed if we're going to wait for it to be the solution itself. We have to birth something brand new based on today. It, we can't wait on the labor unions. We can't wait on any infrastructure that failed in the past. They're going to have to come after it. And there's going to be – one thing you said is so true. It's just it's the millennials, man. It is the millennials who have completely rejected the, the ideas that have been forced on us since birth. And, and you have to ask yourself, how was it that we saw this system and rejected the system when people who lived outside of the system are fully the ones embracing it at this point? Like there was a time before neoliberal trickle-down economics was even a thing, and now you have people who actually lived pre-trickle-down and post-trickle-down just embracing it as if it was the best thing since sliced bread. But you have the millennials who are born dead smack in the middle of it saying, hold on. This is not what we want. So it's the chicken or the egg. Where is it going to come from? I, I think it's going to come from, like uh, JP said, it's going to come from community and connectivity, and we have that opportunity here. Uh, we just have to uh, capitalize on it. When I say here, I mean on social media and through the Internet, just our ability to connect uh, in Atlanta, in Texas, and in Boston, and all of us yell at our cameras and say that there's something wrong and the system is broken and we got to find a way to fix it. And with that being said... I will see you guys tomorrow. The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog, join the Progressive Army, and support The Benjamin Dixon Show. If you like this episode, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Consider becoming a Patreon. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and support the Benjamin Dixon show.